Back now at 8.08 with a two-month adjournment at the trial of Amanda Knox, the American college student accused of murdering her roommate in Italy. We will speak with her mother in a moment, but first, NBC's Keith Miller is in Perugia, Italy, with more on the last day of the trial before Amanda summer Knox recess. Amanda Knox remained relaxed during the proceedings, but for the first time in this trial, the legal teams were combative. The defense accused the prosecution of withholding evidence. The prosecution loudly challenged the accusation, leading the judge to call for order in the court. The alleged evidence apparently concerned DNA testing by the state. The judge suspended the hearings until the documents are turned over to the defense. Well, I think the prosecution did hold back evidence. I think it was very clear. Um, I think that will be very damaging to the prosecution, probably in the eyes of the jury. And I think that it will be grounds for appeal if, if they're convicted. Both Knox and her former boyfriend and co-defendant Rafael Solicito could face 30 years in prison if convicted of murder and sexual assault. They claim they are innocent of murdering Meredith Kircher, an exchange student from England in what the prosecution calls a sex game gone wrong. Before court was adjourned, a forensic scientist for the defense testified that DNA presented as evidence was contaminated. For example, the clasp of the victim's bloody bra that reportedly has DNA from Solicito. It wasn't discovered until a second search of the murder scene, more than a month after the murder was committed in November 2007. Police procedure, according to the expert witness, was all wrong. What is certainly different is how the trial has dragged on. Knox first entered the courtroom seven months ago and faces another four months in prison before hearing a verdict. And a normal judicial year would maybe be no more than two or three weeks in, in a court in the United States or in the United Kingdom. Knox, according to her family, is staying positive, knowing she needs to be patient. And that was NBC's Keith Miller. Amanda Knox's mother, Etta Mellis, is in Perugia to be with her daughter. We spoke with her earlier this morning, and I began by asking her how she maintains her patience throughout this lengthy legal process. Well, we're all we're all working really hard uh, to to stay patient. It's hard, you know. Everybody's gone away on vacation, and and we're sitting and waiting. Is there a certain amount of frustration in that? As you said, they've gone away on this two-month vacation. It's already been seven months, this trial, and no verdict is, is expected until perhaps November. Right. Yeah, it's very frustrating. I've never seen anything like that, where you start a trial and then the court shuts down for two months and, and then you resume again. It's definitely different. When was the last time that you talked to your daughter, Etta, and how is she holding up? You know, Amanda continues to be, you know, amazing. She was there. I saw her on Tuesday. On Thursday, I was driving her sister back to Rome, so I didn't see her that day. I saw her both days in court, but the last time I had a long conversation with her was Tuesday. And she's hanging in there. You know, you and your family have been heavily criticized in the Italian media, most recently for a photo spread that was taken of you and your two younger daughters for an Italian women's magazine. And among the pictures is one of your younger daughters, 14-year-old Ashley, 20-year-old Deanna, and they're standing in front of the crime scene, the, the house where Meredith Kircher was murdered. And the Kircher's family attorney has called the photo macabre. Now, this is particularly concern, concerning, I would think, for your family because in Italy, juries are allowed to pay attention to view media coverage. Given that, do you regret taking those photos? You know, it was an innocent photo that the girls were walking around, um, and I wasn't there at that point in time, but they had walked with the photographer. He asked them to stand in this spot. They obliged. Um, many people have been, you know, photographed there. Uh, it, it was really an innocent thing. And, and the good news is, actually, it was, it's only been kind of two tacky journalists that aren't even Italian that have made comments on it. Everybody else has really not said anything about it. And, and that was one British uh, journalist and an American journalist actually. Also three weeks ago I understand that Ashley was removed from court because as a minor she's not allowed to to listen to sex related cases and then Deanna raised some eyebrows for wearing what appeared to be like a hot pants outfit on, on July 4th, 4th when she was in court. There is a Roman based uh, criminal lawyer who told Newsweek magazine that juries in Italy mm -hmm. pay attention to more than just testimony. As she put it the lawyer should take control of the client's complete image including who attends court with her not just the client's personal behavior. Having said that, if uh, Amanda's lawyers were to say to you, we'd prefer that you not be in court, would you oblige? 
Oh, they've always really encouraged us to be in court. That's that's never been an issue. We were told that um, Ashley could be in court, but the judge has the discretion to um, say that she couldn't, and he chose to do that, um, which was kind of a surprise to us. Deanna did not wear hot pants. It was, you know, 100 degrees that day, and she had on a red, white, and blue ensemble. What's interesting to me is that, you know, the they don't comment on what the prosecutor wears and what, like, the police officers were re re we wear, which are usually very revealing, sequined, skin tight. So I think there's a little bit of a double standard going there where it's very common for them to be um, very provocatively dressed, but only we get commented on. Yeah, but, but they're not the ones on trial or the family of the one on trial. Right. So You know, our lawyers ha have really just encouraged us to, to be who we are. You know, they've, they've just really encouraged us to be who we are and not listen to kind of that tabloid gossip kind of reporting. It's not... It, it's not important. What's important here is evidence. Uh, speaking of that, in court on Saturday, the defense accused the prosecution of withholding evidence, and they also brought in a forensic scientist who said that some of the evidence, the DNA evidence, was contaminated. What do you make of those developments? Well, it's absolutely none, you know, none of the defense attorneys had some paperwork that obviously the prosecution had, and that was when the judge, you know, called a recess and came back and said they had to suspend court until the, the defense was, um, you know, given these really important DNA documents. So it, it was very important. And uh, you, if you look at the video of the handling of some of the very important DNA evidence stuff, it's passed around from person to person, from glove to glove. It's put back on the floor. It's picked up. It's just all over the place. It's incredible. All right, Anna Mellis, as always, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you.